Stop Good it. evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, April 27th meeting of the Fallon Conservation Commission. Before we get started, any electronic devices or cell phones would be greatly appreciated. If you'd silence them, we'll turn them off. Um, if you're here to speak on any of the applications, and we encourage you to do so, we just ask that you go to the podium, give your name for the recording secretary, and please speak in the microphone at all times because we're being recorded by FCTV. Okay, first up is other business, and it's an update on the Little Pond Oyster Demonstration Project. If it doesn't work, I'll sit there and you just tell Thank me when you want me to go through the slides. That's fine. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, Sia sends her apologies. She couldn't come tonight because health reasons. I'm here with my august colleague, who none of you know, right? Eric <laughs> Turkington, who's representing the town in this project and was part of our project management team. <clears throat> so I'm Brian Howes. Uh, and I'm here from the uh, Coastal Systems Program School of Marine Science and Technology at UMass. Uh, we have been working on oysters and in, in, in their effects on the environment of variety towns, but, but first and foremost in Falmouth, really the project started in 2012 because there was a baseline year of no oysters at all, and then there was 2013, 14, and 15 where we were doing more intensive studies. And so whereas I'm going to talk mainly about uh, you know, the more recent, I want to give you the, the all of really the take home since this will be the last time uh, for this particular project that we're doing a summary. I want to give you the, the overview of everything, not just one year, because it was really a four year, three year project, okay? So that's what I'm going to do, if I can make this work. Okay, the goals of the project uh, <coughs> after the first year, which was a baseline year, <coughs> 2013 through 15 was we wanted to go, go to Oyster Pond, uh, Little Pond and we wanted to put in oysters at a high enough density that we could actually see some sort of effect of the oysters. And all of this is about, uh, as, you've, as you know, uh, the fact that many towns in southeastern Massachusetts are trying to lower the nitrogen levels in their estuaries and they're trying to do it by a variety of means. Sewering is one of the means that will be employed in many of them, but there's other things that people are trying to to lower the load. One of them is oysters, one of them is uh, freshwater pond restoration, things like that. But in this case, the town of Falmouth decided that they would look at in estuary solutions and a variety of solutions, in fact, a whole suite of alternatives to traditional wastewater pump and treat type systems to see if they could come up with a, uh, a more cost effective hybrid plan for the town uh, to solve its estuary and nutrient problems. So and this is the oyster piece of that. So part of this was, and part of the problem is, no one really knows how much nitrogen oysters remove. And so the town of Falmouth said, well, OK, how many do we need? And the answer is, we don't really know. And then it comes down to, well, what kind of effect are we going to get? We don't really know. And you go to DEP and you say, we want to use oysters in our management plan. So how much do they remove? And the town says, we don't really know. So part of this project, and not the whole project, by the way, this phase uh, initial step in that effort was to start to come up with that answer so that the town could use this as a tool. That's all it is. We're just trying to know, is this in a research project? This is a, can we get the town a tool that they can use to save money? and also restore their environment. <coughs> so, so we need to put enough in to get a measurable change in water quality that would be due to the oysters or not, to monitor the associated water quality <coughs> as they're being deployed. And, and what I should say, as they're being deployed, they're put in usually in April, May, and they come out in October in Little Pond. They're then relayed over to Green Pond or to Quisset or to West Falmouth. So really, this is not a complete study of the method. It's really just the initial phase of growth from, from you know, fingernail size up to three inches. And that's, that is really a test of the project because little guys don't filter like big guys do. 
And so what we're really doing is looking at the initial phase, and the reason they're taken out of Little Pond is they're attractive nuisance, because Little Pond you can't find shellfish in, so they had to be relayed out. And that was a regulatory piece, not a piece that, that we as scientists or the town as managers wanted to do. It was put upon us by, <coughs> by DEP. So what we did was we, since this is a nitrant project, we looked nitrant cycling, and we really wanted to get that TMDL credit for oysters. We monitored and measured uh, the, the pond also for resource protection. Conservation Commission was concerned about a variety of things uh, <coughs> that we extended the program. There's a, a core program that focuses on the warmer summer months, and then there was a desire to have some, some extra uh, monitoring in November, even after the oysters gone in in April. And also there was a desire to understand what might happen to the benthic animal communities in the pond. And all reasonable uh, to do, and we did that as well. Uh, there's a, an education piece to this, uh, because really it's, even if it works great, we still have to get public acceptance for it. And then, not that I'm going to talk about, but the town also wanted to understand how do you do this, that's logistics. If we wanted to do this for the town, what's it really going to take? And they did get that information out of this project. So <clears throat> the real thing is, is that it's all about nitrogen. Uh, nice thing is, if it doesn't work, you can eat the oysters, so you can eat your experiment. But the bottom line is, is that a lot of towns are doing this in estuary aquaculture, even though we don't know how much credit they'll get. They've gone ahead and they're already doing it. Falmouth is starting on this, this effort. Mashpee is going full bore. Barnesville's done it. Wellfleet, Orleans, Harwich, Dennis. And I have a fleet of others that I haven't even put on. This is six months old, this slide, and there's been many more towns that have come in since then that are trying to do this type of, a Wareham, for instance, they're trying to do this type of method because it's, it's something the towns see as part of their culture, no pun intended, and also it, it will save them money. And it's an economic development thing in the fact that they want to restore this as an economic. So, uh, but how do they lower levels of nitrogen? Well, as you'll see as we go through this, that shellfish do not just cannot, do not just get credit for taking the nitrogen to harvest the oysters. Anybody can do that. You grow them, you harvest them, you measure the amount of nitrogen, that's the amount they remove, done. But that's a, not really the whole picture. There's really a change that oysters make in the estuarine en environment that enhances other forms of nitrogen removal. And those can be big, actually several times the harvest number. And that's, that's the sticky part, okay? That's what we're still, and that's why the university's involved. It's a, that's more of a research effort. So how do they remove nitrogen? Well, what we have is, is, is Falmouth used suspended oyster bags, oyster rafts. The, the trick is they're porous. The phytoplankton flow in with the water through the bags. The, phyto, the oysters take them up and they create biodeposits. They basically, their feces and pseudofeces are deposited in the bottom. That was one of the reasons why CONCOM was worried about the bottom, what happens to the animals in the bottom. The other thing is, is that <clears throat> when it goes to the bottom, it's not just a stay in the bottom, it's re re released back after it's remineralized, goes back into the water column as DIN. And that's a problem because if all you're doing is taking out the water column, putting in the sediment, it goes back in the water column, then you haven't removed anything. But what really happens is some is permanently buried a tiny percent, less than a percent, but what happens is a large percentage of it can go off as nitrogen gas, which is all the money we spend on tertiary treatment and wastewater treatment plants is to create that process in a concrete box, and yet, Nature does it as a free service to us if we can get the biodeposits to the sediments and the, the oysters do that for us. So we get lost by taking out the suspended oyster raft with the oysters in it, harvesting them, we get lost that way. And we get lost through burial in the sediments and that would be permanent burial, not an active burial. It just, it's like, it's, it's about as active as sand at that point, but denitrification is a big loss. And that's actually rivals the the removal by the suspended, by the oysters themselves, as I said. <coughs> okay, that's the sort of background, what you have to know to go into this, but what we have is, is that we had a pilot uh, project area in Little Pond, about two acres, uh, shown in the right-hand graph by the green, the green outline box, shaded box. There's a, like an emergency area that we could take, if anything went wrong, we could remove the, the, the spat and move them down to that green area down there if there was something happened, you know, spill or, or whatever, to save the investment, and then we could move them back. <coughs> as you can see, as you already know, Little Pond is really one of the higher density watershed development areas uh, on the Cape, 
and actually it, it's most of those homes, although they won't be much longer, they are on septic and they were on septic during this period. Uh, and so there's a lot of load going into Little Pond for its, its size. I should also say there's also an estuaries project a, uh, evaluation and a TMDL for this system. So this is part of the DEP's regulatory process is to clean up this pond. Uh, this is the overall area. The red arrow points to where the, the oysters were actually deployed. And then we had all these stations up and down the pond. And it's a classic thing. And when you don't know anything about what's going to happen, because nobody knew, and we couldn't even go to the literature and find out, just nobody knew, we had many more stations than we had in right now, if we we're going to do it again, then we would do it because you don't want to miss anything. You don't want to spend the money to put out a million oysters and then not make your measurements right. Cheaper to make the measurements. We had a lot of measurement sites for, for water column measurements that are relatively inexpensive. Some of them were traditional pond watch sites, so they, f they fall right back into the compliance monitoring for uh, DEP. So that it's a freebie. We get that extra data that we give to them at no extra cost. But in reality, it gives you an idea that we had that oyster rack in there and we were trying to measure upstream from it. When the tide goes in, it pushes water up to, from that through LP13 up to 121, pushes water that way on the ebb, fly, ebb tide. It goes the other way and all of our measurements I'm going to show you were on the, the ebb tide. So the water had come up and is now coming back down this way through the The monitoring plan that we had really was to meet the regulatory needs of Mass DEP relative to TMDL compliance. We did that. We don't have nitro credit yet because we're not done, as you'll see, but we had a start, a big start on it, and we can get something more than we would have gotten. Otherwise, we did a lot of grab sampling. We were asked by, I think, ComCom or DEP, is that okay? And the answer is yes, because the TMDL was established with grab sampling. It's just you're going to grab the water, you're not going to put in continuous monitors. It's a lot cheaper. But that was how the, how the thresholds were set up for DEP anyway, their TMDL. So that was okay. And we had a quality assurance plan. And then we also, to fulfill the conditions of the Conservation Commission, we had into situ sensors uh, that continuously recorded uh, oxygen, temperature, chlorophyll, <coughs> salinity, upstream, in, and downstream. We also did the benthic communities. And we expanded, as I said already, the, the, we did two extra samplings outside of the oyster deployment period. This is just to give you an idea, there's a lot going on. The dates on the right give you an idea of, of the intensity of the effort. The samples going across just give you the, the surface and bottom, as a two is the surface and bottom. So there were around 260 water column samples collected over this April through December to try to gauge the effect of these oysters. Now remember, they went in really small, and that ended up being a problem uh, in the end. <coughs> All right, pardon me. One of the problems in, in Little Pond, which is a problem ecologically that the town has to deal with, and also it, it affected, we just had to know and we dealt with it, but is the fact that we found that the water column in Little Pond is stratified. The surface waters do not mix with the bottom waters through most of the year. So there's a salinity gradient from top to bottom, and the top is operating one way and the bottom is operating another way, and biodeposits can penetrate through that, but there's no mixing of the water. So you can get a different salinity at the top and at the bottom. If the water's mixed up, couldn't happen, right? So it, that's had a big effect on us, but it tended to concentrate the oyster effect in the surface waters because it's not mixing. So the bags were at the surface, and the effect was mainly at the surface. Um, and that's the second bullet. And the third bullet is it, it wasn't the same every year. It was always stratified, but it was, it was less in 15 last year and in the first year, 13. And, it, and, and in 2012 and 14, it was, it was much more intensively stratified, which again tends to concentrate the effects in the surface. This is an ecological problem for, for solving little ponds problems. It may be fixed when the tidal inlet is redone and it widened and, and the channels deepened that inside the pond, not outside. That, that may be solved by that because right now the, the inlet is highly restricted. We tend to get these fresh water buildup in the pond that you wouldn't normally get, and that historically we didn't get back when we started monitoring this pond in the late 80s. Okay, it was once in a while it was stratified for a day or two or a week. Now it stays stays stratified. And these are the salinities. You can see the top. Of, we'll just look at the the one on the left, upper left. They're all the same. The the the, the reddish one 
line is the bottom water. The blue line going up, and you see in all cases, the blue line's under the red line, is the surface water. And what you're seeing is salinity on the left. And you're seeing big salinity difference from top to bottom. I mean, uh, four or five, six parts per thousand, which is huge. Most of the time that we're dealing in this region, <laughs> in estuaries on Cape Cod, we're dealing with a one part per thousand salinity difference, two parts per thousand. Here we have huge salinity difference, so the pond just is not mixing vertically. Its water's moving this way, but it's not mixing this way. That's not doesn't affect our oyster experiment, other than the fact we kind of know <coughs> that, but it does affect the town's management going forward. Have to solve that. Problem. One of the first questions that was asked of us was, <coughs> well, "What's going to the the oysters? Is it going to cause low oxygen in the pond? Are we going to hurt the pond by putting oysters in?" I mean, I think that's a valid concern for the CONCOM. CONCOM asked the question. I think it's a valid concern. The answer is no. What you see, and I got to see if I can get a a uh, laser. Oh, I can. Okay. What you see here is this is where the bags, the where the oysters were, and if anything, we're getting an increase in bottom water oxygen. You're not getting anything in the top. But you're not, you're not seeing a big dip where the oysters are. And in, re, in fact, when, in earlier reports we did, we went back and did a retrospective back to uh, the 90s, and we found that, that oyster, our little pond has had oxygen problems for a long, long time. There is no evidence that putting in oysters here in 2014 caused a big depletion of oxygen where the oysters would be. And the intense, intensity would be where the oysters are. That's a good thing, because if you're going to go forward with this method, you don't want to be trying to clean the pond and restore the pond using oysters, and it, but the oysters themselves are causing damage. Okay, yeah. Well, Just one quick question. Yes, ma'am. Left is upstream. Oh, yes, right that's a good downstream. question, yeah. One is the top, Okay. It's, uh, th and then it goes increases to the bottom. Um, and in fact, if you look at any report we've ever done, that, that's the way we do it, but that's an internal thing, so I don't even see it anymore, but that's a, you need to know that. Um, <clears throat> so, what we typically will find is lower oxygen in the upper pond, up in here, this region here in the bottom waters. Bottom waters are most susceptible to low oxygen. See, and then it, oxygen increases as you move down pond. That's sort of typical. You get little bips and bops in here, but for the most part, this area of the pond, going all the way back to 1987, has lower oxygen in it than down near the mouth. And why would that be? Well, down near the mouth, the tide, there is still some tide from Vineyard Sound that comes in with cold, high oxygen, low nutrient water comes in from the sound, and it tends to keep the lower part of the pond lower nutrients, higher oxygen. The upper pond is warmer, has higher nutrients, higher chlorophyll, higher everything else, higher organic matter, tends to have lower oxygen. It's not that low oxygen water is coming in up here. It's that the, the water that's there, the oxygen is being sucked out of it by the animals, plants, and mainly the decomposition of all the organic matter that's there. And the phytoplankton at night when they respond. So in 2015, we had a problem which affected the whole year's work, which was in the summer, uh, in uh, sort of late to mid-August, we had this is bottom water oxygen at the, uh, actually surface water oxygen, sorry, in the oyster bag area itself, it wasn't in a bag, but in that area, and what happened was there was a big low oxygen event. And this is the bottom, so this isn't in the bag, this is the bottom under the bags. And what had happened was the pond had, had, was stratified, and we had a pond-wide low oxygen event, and it got it was of sufficient concern that the the, the people that <coughs> are operating the oyster culture system said so we got to get these oysters out of here, and it lasted a week or ten days. Okay, and so they pulled out most of the oysters to the, either the lower part of the pond or over to Green Pond. The problem with that is is that at the point they they left, they were still really small. So in fact. And I, I'm not going to leave you with this. This isn't like the big conclusion. But what happened was 2015 became an experiment of, okay, if you had oysters there, and then you had oysters there, and you see this effect, what if there's no oysters there? What if you take them out and they're gone? Well, if the scientists knew that, they might be biased in looking at the data. But we didn't really know that. So we did all of the analysis, just like we've done in the previous years, with the thought that there were still oysters there. And I will just tell you, it becomes a great control experiment in the sense that we couldn't find anything. We could find no effect. And we were going crazy because we thought there were a million oysters there, but they weren't. They had been pulled out uh, to save their, their existence. So we have good data on oyster effects from 2013 and 14. 2015 is a great control experiment, 
proof of concept that in fact the oysters were doing something because we saw this effect in two years but we didn't see it in this year and we didn't know that they had really all been removed. That may sound funny to you, but, but really when you're going forward and trying to deal with, with the regulatory agencies and stuff, that's a really good story. And so what did we find? Well, this is one thing we found. In 2000, uh, this is particular organic nitrogen, which is, is the, the main form that you want to go into those biodeposits. It's the nitrogen that's in the particles. So what are the particles? The particles are alive, dead, senescing, whatever. Phytoplankton, they're particles of phyto that the oysters take up. They either eat them and incorporate some of that into their into their bodies, or they, <coughs> they package it up and send it to the bottom. But that's the main mechanism. They don't take up ammonia, they don't, like, like phytoplankton, take up ammonia, they take up nitrate, they create phytoplankton. <coughs> phytoplankton are PON, and the oysters take up the PON, send it to the bottom, or they, they grow with it, or they excrete it back as inorganic. And what we saw in 2013, which is our best year, uh, was our, our best growth year, and what we saw there was a clean drop from this is where the oysters are and what we saw was a drop of about 10 percent in PON from up time after time after time. This is over the growing season of 10 percent from up above the bags on the ebb tide, the water's going this way, it drops 10 percent, drops another about 9 percent, whatever, as it moves in through the bags and then down gradient. The next year, these are the nitrogen level, the PON levels. So the concentrations are much lower in 2014. But we still had from here to here a 10% drop. And then it went kind of level. It's not worth talking about. These aren't different. These are different. And so we're getting about a 10% loss as the water passes through the oyster culture system and, and it's taking it out of the water. It doesn't mean it goes away, but that's what we're getting. We're getting about a 10% loss. Not a lot. But that's what it is. For the particulate carbon, it's associated with the nitrogen, but we're seeing, you know, on the order of about the same thing. You know, ordering around 9% or so this way and about 9% for 2014. Again, similar type result. It's not a huge thing. You're not going to clean little pond with these kinds of removals because these are little oysters. If these grew up, when these these oysters grow to the next phase, their filtration rates will increase four to six fold. So their impact will increase four to six fold, but we weren't allowed to leave them in. As I said, we're not in control of everything. We're doing, working with what we have and trying to see if we can pull something out of this demonstration project that the town can use. We didn't set up the demonstration project to do this. We said, hey, there's a demonstration project. Let's see what we can pull out of it for the town to see if they can not have to redo everything in the world and pay for all that. And then for total pigment, total pigment is a surrogate for the biomass of phytoplankton that's in the water. But again, you're seeing on the order of the same kinds of, you know, you're not seeing 50% removals, you're seeing, you know, on the order of 10. It's still coming around 10% removal of the phytoplankton itself as, it, as the water moves through the bags, which are here, through the bags. And the phytoplankton are sucking it out, filter. It's really not rocket science. I mean, it makes sense. The question is, we could actually measure it. And that's the difference. And the same thing, a little bit, this is harder for people to understand. It's a turbidity assay where lower is better. And so it, it just says that when, when it's lower, there's more water clarity. And this is a better way of looking at it than looking at the disk, which many of you have used. But it's just an estimate of water clarity. And what we see is as you go above the bags, into the bags, and then down, is that the water, the water clears up. Well, of course it clears up. You've taken out the phytoplankton, you've taken out the particles. So, so that's what's mainly knocking the light down that is not allowing things to grow on the bottom, like yield grass. So this is a positive thing, and it's totally consistent with the previous graphs that I showed you. All right, so... What we found was that the absolute TN levels in Little Pond, the total nitrogen levels in Little Pond, didn't really change significantly when we started the project from 2006. Little Pond is not getting better. If anything, it's getting slightly worse, all right? So we went all the way back to 2006 findings, really went back 2006 to 2000, so it was a six-year period. We're not finding any big differences from, from that period to the present period. There hasn't been that much going on in the watershed in, in Little Pond during that period. So. You, know, may, you may think, well, we're doing this and this and this, but when you look at the mass load going into that pond, it's not changing that much. And then 
<coughs> what we found is, is that the low oxygen conditions in the bottom water in 2012 to 15 were sort of consistent with what we had found back in the 2000 to 2006, reported in 2006, uh, Estra's project report. The other thing is, is that we, we can't find any negative effects. I'm not going to go through the minutiae of the animal community, just suffice to say, there's no difference in the benthic animals before there were oysters, after there were oysters, up from oysters, in oysters, down from oysters, all around the pond. Pretty much the benthic animal communities in Little Pond are that you would find in a highly nitrogen enriched, stressed environment. And, and the oysters aren't doing that. It's stressed because of all the load that's going in there. And that's why the nitrogen levels are so high and the chlorophyll levels are so high. And the oxygen's low. Right. So our specific conclusions from this little three-year initial project on, on small oysters, and I, I have to, you could ask me why I'm, I'm stressing that they're small. It's because the effects of 10%, I don't want people to walk out of here thinking, oh, well, geez, it's only 10%. Yeah, it's 10% if you're using really small oysters. And what we're working on in other places now is big oysters, and the effect is, is greatly enhanced. If you go to the literature, it'll be greatly enhanced. It is greatly enhanced there, too. What we found is we did find a modest localized water quality improvement. You know, we found lower, lower uh, particles, lower nitrogen, lower chlorophyll, lower phytoplankton were sucked out, higher water clarity, all those things. It's all good stuff. It's what we want. It's what really is underpinning the TMDL for Little Pond is they want lower nitrogen, lower particles, higher water clarity, all those things that the oysters are actually, and we're not finding any negative things. Uh, the 2015, which only had small oysters, were taken out August 28th. They only went in in like around June 1st or May, mid-May. We couldn't find any effect, and that's actually a good thing. A <laughs> good thing we found that. In 2013 and 14, where we did have uh, you know fairly good deployments, we found that chlorophyll A was reduced, which means the phytoplankton were being taken up and deposited. We found increased breakdown products of that chlorophyll, which is good. It means the oysters are actually eating and, and digesting the, the phytoplankton. The nutrient data show a decrease in total nitrogen, which is the TMDL. That's the target in the TMDL for DP. So the total maximum daily load is based upon land use load that goes into the estuary that creates a certain concentration in the bay of total nitrogen. Not of something else, but of total nitrogen. And <clears throat> we had, again, the, the critical part was in 2013 and 14, the water column really did have lower POC, PON, and chlorophyll within the oyster area than above, and it declined as you went through in those times when we actually had enough there, we could see the decline. And <clears throat> and each year when we remove the oysters, uh, and I didn't share that data, but each year when we remove the oysters, we actually see the water clarity decline and the pigments and nitrogen go back up again. Because October, early October when they're taken out, still early enough in the season, you can still have a growing period for phytoplankton and all that. So we had a great experiment in that you put them in and things go down, you take them out, they go back up. You think you put them in, but you didn't put them in, they never go down. So it all sort of works together that, that you know, there is some credit to this. Now, what I want to say, too, is that when I say oysters represent a viable ecological approach for improving water quality, it's true. But I didn't say because we didn't do it in 2015, but we did do it and present it to you in an earlier, earlier annual report, was that we found that the oyster, even these small guys, led to an increase in the denitrification removal of nitrogen in Little Pond of about equal to the amount that was removed by harvest of the oysters. In other words, if you just looked at the harvest and said, okay, that's one kilogram taken out, you have to add another kilogram that wouldn't be counted by DEP or anybody else because it's a sediment nat nitrogen cycling takeout. And that that number is likely to be really, in real world, if you really did this to do it the right way, you know, in other words, we're gonna deploy this to actually make it an alternative for restor partial restoration, partial restoration, it's probably, if it's one for harvest, it's probably three or four for, for the total nitrogen, okay, because of these other alterations of the nitrogen cycle. And that's what's now coming out by some of my colleagues around the U.S. and Chesapeake and up and down in, in North Carolina. <coughs> that's, they're starting to see these multipliers, but it is system specific, so you get credit, but that's a huge multiplier. If you're going to spend $100,000 to do oysters, but you end up getting $400,000 worth of removal, 
Well, that would be great. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking that multiplier is critical. All right. And that's what it really is. They alter the nitrogen cycle such that denitrification is increased. All right. In this, I can say only right now for little pond only that it's a doubling of the nitrogen. But these are for little guys that got went from that to that. That's it. So it's going to be a lot more because the filtration rate will go up and the removals will go up as they get larger. When we project the nitrogen removal rates, we need to account for site-specific. In other words, we already know, because we're not just working in Little Pond, we're working all over Cape Cod, that we already know that site-specific conditions will increase or decrease the amount of removal that you get. For instance, if Little Pond was totally crystal clear and clean, you wouldn't be getting these removals because there's nothing to remove. It's that simple. None of this is complex. So in planning forward, if you want to use this as a tool, which it looks like it may really have some, some positive. We were only asked to figure out if, could this work? So yeah, the answer is yeah, it could work, but you gotta deal with the numbers and size of the oysters that you're using for the t by the town and the duration that they're in there in order to get the oyster effect. And the reality is, is that what we're really talking about now to towns is having a cycling of oysters where you have three different year classes in there. So you're not gr taking little guys and growing them up this much and removing them for three months or four or five months. What you're doing is you have first year, second year, third year. So by the time you have your second, third years, and then you're cycling the third years out for harvest and moving the second years in. And you don't even have to move them, but just you're cycling those through. That means you always have a, a, a couple years classes of large shellfish that will do the job at a sustainable constant level rather than what we had in this experiment was a boom and bust you put them in nothing or you put them in really nothing they start to grow up they get to a point where they're really doing something then you take them out and it collapses again so but this was not this was only to show can they grow can it have an effect and will it hurt the pond the answer it doesn't hurt the pond they can grow and yes it has an effect and i think that's it yep thank you Thank you, Dr. Allison. Jen, anything we learned on? Mm -hmm. Betsy. Yeah, I have some questions. First of all, Brian, are, are, is this going to be either in a publication or a report? Uh, we've already submitted a report to the, every year we submit an annual report to the Water Quality Management Committee. And, and, and so, so we submitted that, and we always submit that before, yeah, and like give a presentation to them, and then we come to CONCOM, and we present to you. So, okay. so that, and we've done that each of the three years. Okay. Um, so my my, I have a couple of questions. One is, uh, let, let's let's use an average of ten percent removal for by these two acres. Yeah, when they're big. Yeah. Well, I mean. No, I, no, 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 no. The ones you had here, you yeah, said there was ten percent yeah. removal of um, particulate. Nitrogen yep. and carbon, but and and I think I remember this from a previous talk you gave about ninety percent of particulates are either feces or pseudofeces, and ten percent goes into the yeah it's animal, it's, it's not quite that but ninety percent is good enough we'll just stick with that okay and when it gets into the sediment you 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 know. Obviously, it was it was just a little cartoon, but you have the layer which is uh, uh, has oxygen, and then the anoxic layer, mm -hmm. and it has to get into the anoxic layer before you actually have denitrification. Well, you have to nitrify it in the anoxic layer, and then it has to diffuse down to the. And what happens? It diffuses down in the anoxic layer, or it diffuses back out into the water column. Right. But but it's going both ways because it's, there's zero nitrate in the anoxic zone, so it diffuses that way. And there's very low in the water column, so it diffuses that way. But remember that that oxic layer may only be a millimeter or two. Well, that's, yeah, that was part of what, but you said that, that, but you said really not that much actually gets down into the anoxic layer. Not that much denitrification takes. What you said was, what I heard what you said was the amount of denitrification nitrification that takes place is equal to the amount of the harvest, biomass. Yeah. You use. It just we did a mass balance and we were trying because remember our question is how much bang do you, how much nitrogen is removed 
buy these oysters. Right, and you're and saying you can't and so just we do didn't, it from, do we, yeah. from so, the biomass removal because some is removed by denitrification. Well, and nobody accounts for that. Up to now, right. people just harvest and well, they grind it up. Well, because people didn't have the numbers. That's hmm? why. People didn't have good numbers. Any numbers? Well. <laughs> yeah. Well, the methods weren't there. So right. it's a technology thing, is, if you really want to know. We're not smart in this. It's just technology. Um, and then the other question I have is, you talk about the stratification, which obviously occurs in different water bodies. But you said it occurred in two of the four years, or was, was no? It was very strong in two years and weaker in two years. Right, but is that correlated with rainfall, temperature? I mean, did you do uh, any correlation? We had two things happen over this three, four-year period. One was we had one very warm year. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which that was. It might have been. I can't remember. I'm getting old. And then we had a, a really wet year. So it can be attributable to each, except that the difference we're seeing is really. Uh, most likely correlated with fresh water because it's a salinity stratification. So it's very likely that what we're seeing is, is more fresh water coming in at the head. Little ponds, one of those ponds gets a lot of fresh water coming in that stream at the head, you know, given its size. A lot of groundwater comes in there. Uh, a lot of groundwater comes in, but a lot of fresh water comes in yeah. that stream. Yeah. And, uh, we did a, a whole series of papers on that years ago, but it's, it's I think it's about even. It's about half groundwater and half surface water yeah. goes into But a lot that. of fresh water comes in. Yeah, a lot of fresh water comes in and that helps to stratify. But it, when the inlet's wide open and you get all this, this advection, move, you know, the tide's right, going right. in and you can see the water going up and water's moving on around the pond, it helps to break down that stratification. But the inlet to Little Pond has been highly restricted for now at least this full project. Since 2012. Well, since when was that? When was that inlet replaced? It was replaced in the early 2000s, I think. It was after the hurricane. Well, so after Bob. Is that when it was it, replaced? It was, re it was replaced in the 90s. Okay. You know, we worked with the town on, on getting. What had happened was the inlet, had, the jetties had been destroyed. The inlet had collapsed, and and dealing with the town, we said, you know, you really need an inlet that's this big, but because of FEMA and various things, it was, it was decided not to make it as maximum, the size it really would have to be to do full flushing, but to significantly increase the area by changing the inlet itself, but keep it within the existing footprint so that the town didn't have to go through all the pain in the universe of moving a jet. So we knew that it was a little bit smaller than it should be, but it was still double or more than it had been before. And it did have a positive effect on it. The big problem now is getting the sand out to allow the water to come in. There's sand built up on the inside well, of the yeah, pond, and that has been a problem all the way back since the 80s. That has never gone away, that problem. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Um, no questions, but very interesting. I'm not serving oysters tonight. <laughs> Jamie. No questions. Blake. How often do you think of that? Necessitate removing the oysters happen. Happen once in the three years. Right. How is often? This, is this a once in a decade or once in a? What? I, I, I'm sorry. It's my hearing, not you. It's me. Well, uh, but uh, the the, the um, one of the three years necessitated pulling the oysters out of the pond. Yeah. Well, there was a question. And the, my question is: Is how often would you anticipate that happen? Is well, that once in a decade, or once in every three years, or in, in truth, the the reality was that, that again, when you don't know anything, people do things to be cautious, to, you know, to not blow the town's money. They, they were pulled, but they, in fact, they didn't need to be pulled. That, that in fact, the oysters had grown to a large enough size that the, there were some that were left behind, you know, like as a little mini experiment. We weren't involved in this because remember, we didn't even know, right? That so. So that, and the ones who were left behind survived because they had grown up to an inch, and that was lar that is large enough. And we now know that that's large enough that they can survive this. But we also know from year one that the real when you first get out there, very small. We had a low oxygen event early in June, and they were dying like crazy. And so you lose fifty thousand, hundred thousand spat, and you go crazy. So I think that helped to sort of increase the caution this past year. But now we know, or the town knows. And so I think that really it's only these rare events. 
Little Pond is a very rare pond for the amount of hypoxia. If you put this in Bourne's Pond or Green Pond or Great Pond, that, you, it's not, you wouldn't have to remove them at all. It's not going to happen. Unless you put them way up in the top area, you know, the, which you wouldn't put them. But you might put them. But. Thank you. I just had, that was a great presentation, by the way. Um, I just had one question. Why, you said something about a public nuisance, and that's why you take, and the big ones are taken out, even though they're the better filters. Yeah, it, I, it happens, it happens a lot of time. You do things like this, and if you grow oysters up to edible size, but they're in an environment that has high coliforms, and you, you're not legally allowed to harvest, then how do you prevent the people from going in and harvesting? Okay, that was yeah. Okay, I could. And, and it's a problem everywhere. But the thing is, here they made the town pull it. For me, I would have argued back, I wasn't involved in that discussion, that you know, in New Bedford, they have all these PCB contaminants, all this, this harvest, and it's still gazillions of cohogs, it's mainly cohogs. And then they're still there. So, that, so clearly they have a mechanism to deal with it. But, but we just pulled them. They said, you've got to pull them, we pull them, right? Yeah. All right, so it was basically because people were going to harvest them, even if it said don't harvest them. Uh, in, in theory, people would go out there and harvest them, yeah. But uh, no, I'm, ask me if I think people would harvest them, I'm not so sure, because okay. that would mean theft out of bags and things. Okay. They weren't Thank free. You. If they were lying on the bottom, then yeah, probably that would happen. But they were still in bags. Okay. Thank you. Kristen. That's a great presentation. Um, one of my colleagues had done a, uh, somebody down where they put a fish tank and put the oysters in it and just showed the, over time, time lapse. Yeah. Of how the water clear. Yep. It'd be great to, I mean, for you know, general public to see it just go from cloudy to clear. Hey, this is a STEM project. <laughs> They're filter feeders. I know. That's what they do. That's what filter feeders do. But it's it's good. I mean, it, it, it makes the point because here I'm up here over and over again saying, I know where it gets clear of the particles. This isn't really rocket science. But you know, it's still people have to in order to get buy-in. Can't expect people to do things for something new unless they really understand. That's our position. I'm at a university. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mr. Good. No, no questions. Nice presentation. That's it. Thank you, Brian. Oh, you have a question there. Well, I'm sorry. Will you take a question? Absolutely. You're just going to have to go to the mic. <laughs> What's good for the goose is good for the gander. <laughs> uh, Sam Patterson, one of the selectmen. I'm curious, uh, you suggested that we might keep the oysters in through a two-year period or three-year period. Uh, but how would we actually do that? Would they still have to be in rafts? Because you, you, you wouldn't be legal. You were not legally. You can't. Dr. Could you give to the microphone, please? So. Yeah, it's a good question. Legally, you can't leave them in Little Pond, right? Because they have to come out. But if you put them in Green Pond or Orange Pond, you're one of those things where they have they've gone to Green Pond and they've gone to Quisset and to West Mountain. Quisset's not working because of predation. But put them in one of those, leave them there. And then and if you go, like for us, we're working in West Bay in three days, they have multi-year distribution. You can go out there and this acre or two acres is first year, and this is second year, and this is third year. So we're looking at, at that that way. But you need to get that stable filtration. You have to think of it. If we pull them all out, then we just removed our treatment system. So yeah, it can happen. It happens normally, actually, in many systems, because they want different sizes. You can't usually eat first year. Correct. I just, I mean, I'm just thinking of I'm just leaving them off. Just leave them Just leave them on. A little time, you can't leave them in. You can't. And because of TP, though, not because the oysters. The oysters don't care. Okay. Well, also, are, are they more likely to suffer anoxic effects in the bottom? Yeah, you know, but it doesn't bottom? go. It doesn't go anoxic for long periods. It goes hypoxic, low oxygen, but it doesn't go anoxic. But for like a week, and oysters, you know, clam up. Oyster, you know, they shut down and, and they can survive, uh, you know, good periods without without having uh, high oxygen. So, it might cut their growth a little. I have one more quick question. How long does it take if they're, the reason they're taken out of Little Pond is because obviously the, the they aren't healthy to eat? Right. How long does it take them to clean if they're bringing it to these other harbors that then you can harvest them in? 
taken well, when they're taken out, they're not really harvestable yet. Okay. I mean, they're at that kind of rate getting there, but but they're be great marginally harvestable. But usually, you'll grow them for another year someplace to grow. Them. Okay. How long does it take to depurate, meaning to get rid of the bacterial <laughs> contamination? I've been to depuration plants where they're they're depurating oysters in in flow through systems in 24, 48 hours. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else in the public? Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is minutes. Uh, we will go back second. I read all. Absolutely. Let's go March 2. I, Mr. Chairman, um, I reviewed the minutes and find them to be in very good order. Um, there was one question I have on page 5. A question or a comment is attributed to a Ms. Anderson, but that's not correct. Dr. Anderson, Donna Anderson, was here that night, so I think it probably was either Betsy or Maury who was actually making this comment. Yeah, I'll circle it because I have some things to Okay. But that's uh, that's my only correction. I, I have a, I have some correction. Um, on page three, I know we always come up with new words for you, but <laughs> and I realize that zero escape sounds like zero escape, but it's X E R rather than C E R. So I have that correction. And it's I I don't know, isn't it? C I R X E R I I think. I think. It's worth it. Alright. Um but Probably. No, I think I was here. All right, but Maury, this is on page three. This is, yep. this is something attributable to you. And, and I doubt you said it, but I, I couldn't figure out an alternative. Uh, there's something about the deck. How many extra footings? And Mike says maybe six. And then uh, Jen says that might be required to bring the deck up to code. And you said, you said I'm not sure about the plantings chosen. They are more freshwater plants. What did you mean freshwater plants? What, they were, it was plethora, I think. And that's more of a um, BBW plant than a saltwater tolerant plant. Oh, oh, okay. So you mean water tolerant as opposed to? Yes, salt tolerant, less salt tolerant. Less salt tolerant. Yes. tolerant. Betsy, what hearing was it? Hmm? Which um, hearing is it? Tonsett Road in North Falmouth. Okay. Page three. Okay. X E R I. And yeah, so I'll second your motion. Like page two. And you have me being recruited and returning, and I was here. Mm -hmm. Page two. Page two. At the bottom. Page two. Which hearing? Maury, Maury went out and I stayed. I don't, you know, I don't stay. And as much as I seconded the motion, I'm pretty sure I would hear. <laughs> I, 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 I might not trust my judgment, but we've got it right that I seconded it. So I probably would. All right. And I'll hand this over. I, I, I made that change. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to so we have a motion and a second. No, we don't have a second. Yeah, I said that. Okay, we do have a second. And we're going to do the motion. So motion is as correct. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. So we have a summer. March 9th. Mr. Chairman, I read the minutes of March 9th and I'm in appropriate. On page four, uh, this is the 
Little, 128 Little Neck Bars Road, and one, two, three, four comments from the bottom. Ms. Uh, Ms. Blackholder, I just want to state that this is, and it's a, it's a B zone, not an A zone. Where the patio was. Yes. It's a B zone. Mm -hmm. B or B? A B. B B, B is in velocity. Not either A is an A buffer or an A foot zone. Or B is a B buffer. Or B is a B buffer. That's what I thought you meant. Okay, guys, we haven't even started. Yes. Savvy. Maybe you have something. Anyone else? Okay. okay, I got a motion by Mike, and do I have a second? I second. That's a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no abstention. One yes. abstention, I was in here. Oh, one abstention. So one I wasn't present. March 16th. You don't have those yet? Yeah? No. Okay. I think we did those last week. You didn't? You don't have them yet. You don't have them. Either the 23rd either? Yeah, we're the 23rd. Yeah, we're the 23rd. Okay. I don't. Higher than the 23rd. So, March 23rd. I have a, just a, a semantic comment here. These, these minutes are not uh, a Pilates class for seniors, so you don't use the word motion, you move. And I'm, uh, <laughs> I didn't okay. No, I don't. Okay, so wherever it is in that thing, it's not motion. You moved something. Okay. Motion is Pilates for seniors. I can't think Other than that, I think they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Mario wasn't here, so he needs to be taken out. You didn't do this. No. But, um... Actually, he was here one of those meetings. He was. But he wasn't here. But he wasn't sitting. He wasn't sitting here. Um... Kootenai River flows from Kootenai Pond, not from far, and it's through Cranberry Bog, not active Cranberry Bog, and then out to, and I call that Vineyard Sound. Don't you call it Vineyard Sound? Okay. Uh, okay, a few typos here and there. Um, just a few words here and there. And then, I wasn't here for the, for the steam trip, but I did read it since it was in the minutes, and it's Mr. Sayers, S-A-Y-E-R-S. Did you make that correction? Yes, I did. Thank you. I'll, go, I'll have Courtney edit those minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and... You don't have to yeah, do it. That's it. I'll have Courtney do it. I know what Mike's. I, one, yeah, I would not promote it to chairman. Uh, rough back will open the meeting. For, so, um, chairman Robert. There is a general comment. Um, it lacks the, uh, the, the detail that we, we sometimes see. I, I didn't say anything that wrong, but it, it's not the, the, uh, the detail we're used to when we get the door. You're I saying that Susan has spoiled us. So yes, I guess that's the word. I guess that's exactly the word. And it was very job. fortunate to have Susan. But for a substitute to have to sit through one of our meetings. Especially that I, meeting. I think this Especially person did that an one. excellent job. Okay. That was a long meeting. You were so not sorry you missed it. <laughs> okay. So I move that we accept. Second. And a second. That's corrected. Any other comments, questions? Here, not a problem. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those no. I'll do my discussion. I wasn't here. Oh, I'm sorry. We have two questions. Yes. Well, okay. Let's go down. Okay, March 30th. You don't have them. 
we don't have none of the folks in here. No, we don't have three. Three. This is the one on the agenda. It says Wednesday, March 30th. Right You've here. already it's accepted those. Oh, oh, yeah. oh we, we don't, you don't want the second one, even though I've read it? You've already voted the second one. Oh, you don't want my comments? No, you've already I voted. I any comments on this one. Well, good, because they've already voted. Oh. <laughs> okay, that explains why I don't have one. No. <laughs> Moving on. Read, Request to uh, continue <laughs> hearing under a notice of intent. Well, I have these, and I read these, too. What, which one? The, they're not on the agenda. They're not on the agenda. Yes, I have them too. But I'll, I'll have her put a, Which one are they? April, April 13th. Okay. Next week you'll have all three of them. Okay, so moving on. Request to continue hearing under notice of intent. Uh, Schumann Valley Property Owners, Inc., Curry Roads, East Island Mass. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the applicant is requesting a continuance until May 25th. So moved. Second. By Mari, second by Gary. Any comments, questions from the commission? Oh, well, actually, yeah, I do have some comments, but, but I'll give them to Jen about this project before they come before us. There's some things that they should do. Okay. But Please. I won't mention it in public. Comments, questions from the public? If you hear none, I'll call for the roll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Okay, request for determination of applicability. K. Khan, 438 Seco Shores Boulevard, East Island, Mass. For permission to resync one pile, replace one pile, and, and replace the walkway according to approved orders of conditions. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until May 11th. So moved. Second. Yes, we have a. Uh, the uh, motion by Maury, second by Mary, to continue to May 11. Any comments and questions from the commission? Comments and questions from the public? Okay, here now, I'm proper to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstention. And so moved. Okay, request for a hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authority of Mass Weapons. And the final question file although a single decision on the commission decision to represent a separate decision on the each dollar. First up is Ray Samuels, 86, Western Road, North Island Mass, Commission to raise R A D E, the existing dwelling and construct a single family house with a attached garage, sunroom, deck, green stairs, uh, installed. Type of fire sewer disposal system, utilities, dry well, dry wells, driveway, brick patio, AC platform, native mitigation plantings, and associated clearing, excavating, grading, and landscaping. Again. I don't say I have any of my comments until after Barbara's presentation. Welcome back, Barbara. Oh, thank you. Uh, for the record, Barbara Frappier with Warwick and Associates, representing the Samuels. Um, as your chairman read, this is a raise and rebuild with a new uh, Title V septic system. The resource areas on site are uh, the flood zone and also the buffer zone to two uh, different wetlands. Um, one is a wooded swamp, freshwater wetland, and the other buffer zone that intrudes into the property is a uh, buffer to a coastal bank. I had hoped to make this coastal bank go away because it was a slope next to a freshwater wetland. But um, in having a meeting with Jen, she um, told me that this wetland at some point in time runs around, goes out of culvert into the Bluff Harbor. So I didn't, I wasn't able to deep six that bank. <laughs> you tried though. Give it a good, give it a good old college try. You tried to get a grant to restore it at one point. No, we didn't get into that, no. but anyway. So anyways, as you can see on the plan and the plans that you have, what is shown in red is the existing house, and what is in blue is the house that is proposed. It is um, more um, vertical rather than horizontal to the lot. In the front is the Title V septic system and a uh, 
driveway, turn around driveway there, and at the end, we have the limit of work in the orange line here, which pretty much goes along the edge of the existing lawn, away from the woods. And we have some mitigation planting. There is 130 square feet of structure in the B buffer to the coastal bank, which requires 260 square feet of mitigation planting somewhere in there. There's precious little room to do it. What we've shown on the plan is an area where it would technically the square footage fits on a paper plan, but in reality, we're not sure it's going to go exactly there. Obviously, when it comes time to do the as-built and get compliance, we will have to demonstrate that we have successfully gotten the 260 square feet of mitigation plantings there. The other issue is the matter of some trees. In order to put the septic system in the front, if you look at the pictures, if you went out to the site, you see that there are trees in the front and we're going to be lost to, because we have to put the septic system up there. And the house had to be pushed back in order to get the proper setback from the septic leaching field. Um, there, we are showing a driveway, but in speaking with Mr. Samuels, the hope is that perhaps we can angle that driveway a little bit in reality and maybe save a couple of trees in the course of doing that in the front. Those trees are trees that are in the uh, flood zone only. There are also some trees that it, you will see that will be lost to construction that um, are either going to be too close to the house or they're already too close to the existing house. And again, we will end up having to replace them as space will allow. And that therein is my challenge. If we have, if we lose four or five trees, I don't really have on that lot for an area with a 10 foot radius around each to put some big oak trees. Along the side is one area that I was concerned about. It's if you're facing the lot, it's on the left hand side, the trees are very close in there. Um, this, they're pines. If those come out, we would replace them with some red cedars or something else um, in, the, in that area. Again, we're going to try to maintain as much of the existing vegetation as we can, but it's a well-treated lot. There's not a lot of open space, and we're sort of limited to what we can do for or the health setbacks, uh, your setbacks, in order to make this house fit. It's a modest house. It's um, compliant with FEMA and the built code standards. And um, what I would like to do is say that we can offer the 260 mitigation for the shrubbery, native shrubs, um, and the trees we will replace as space will permit. Um, it's not really going to be, you know, very easy to uh, fit them all in, but we can meet afterwards and perhaps work with staff and see what we can save and what we can't. So at uh, that, I'll just stop there and field your questions. Jen? No questions. Mike? Okay, well. Nice presentation, Paul. Thank you. I've got a couple questions. And sure. Thank you. Thank you. Lori? A um, couple questions, Barb. Sure. Um, where you have a limited work on the edge of the lawn, I understand why you yep. probably put it there, but is it going to be um, a protection of those oak trees? There. I don't know. I don't know that they're, that they're going to be saved. The trouble is with that, I mean, the ones inside the limit of work. Yeah, the 15 inch oak, the yeah, 11 yeah, inch the 11 oak, the 8 inch oak. There's four trees there. There's one closest to the mm -hmm. new house. Yeah, why would they have to go? Um, because when you put the new house in, if you look at the, the breadth of them, the canopy on that house, yeah. uh, whether they're going to hit the house or not. And we're not going to take out anything that we absolutely live with. But if it's going to scrape up against the house because the canopy is so large, I mean, I'm showing a little circle. Oh, yeah, I know the big. And yeah. that's why, I mean, I, I would like to see them safe. I, the 15-inch, the I can see maybe being, you know, a problem, especially. That's the one that I think would be the most, most problem. problematic. But the 11 and the 8, I don't see any reason. If the limit of work is not, <coughs> if they're not protected, they're going to go. I can tell you that. Yeah. There's no reason to save them if they're within 
the hacking of the inside of limited work. So that I had a concern with. And then the other question, um, is the tank going to be in H20? I know it's out of our jurisdiction. It's going to be H20. All right. I figured because it was that yes. close to the driveway. Sure. Um, that maybe the driveway could be moved so some of those trees, you know, on the Well, that, was, that was what uh, okay. I was talking with Mr. Samuels about, to, to maybe just angle that driveway yeah. a little bit to save as save much as we can, even though it's okay. not in the buffer. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Kristen. Uh, no comments. No questions. I have a question. Yes. Well, actually, it's not a question. It's sure. just a suggestion. Sure. Um, where where do you plan to put the your shrubs? Yes. Well, that's just a theoretical yeah. spot. Yeah, but but what isn't theoretical yeah. is I, I'm on a I'm on a war against English ivy, <laughs> and there's English ivy there. So, so that English ivy will disappear. Yeah. Otherwise. I mean, because trees will disappear. The English ivy will disappear. Yeah, that's what... I assure you. E even that would be a big... The English, English ivy will disappear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> big, a big benefit. It will yeah. be a big, huge benefit. Yeah. And it might afford some space if we could plant some other ground cover that would yeah. be more appropriate. That would be great, yeah. <clears throat> that's my only comment. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, just, I have a suggestion or request, I guess. Um, you mentioned, um, I think, in the narrative, providing an as-built to show where you're actually going to put Well, where we actually plantings. did put it, yes. Right, 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 mm -hmm. after the fact. And um, would you also include on that where you have removed trees? Yes, because when you get the as-built plan, it will be this plan without the red house on it and without the trees that are marked here now, those trees will no longer be on the plan. So the as-built will reflect any removed okay. trees. Yes, they will. And, added, and, added, and, added. and, and any added trees right. will be reflected on there, yes. Okay, that's all, thank you. Sure. James. I think I'm missing something. Is this closer than the existing, hmm. the proposed? Yes. But it's in the B zone, it's not the A zone. Right. That's why I'm asking. And, and, and it's because, Jamie, we had to push back to get the set back. The set, that's all I heard you yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Welcome. He didn't want to do that. We made him. <laughs> Jamie, that provision is when you're in the A buff for you can't be any closer to the knows. present primary circle. Okay. Make it more good. Doesn't mean I take that in the Say that in my comments until bar after Barbara's presentation. Seth the Kepper. Ready? Yes. All right. Again, Barbara Frappia from Warwick and Associates. This is a project that has been sort of thorn for many years. Uh, we dealt with it back in 09, and I filed with you an RDA to upgrade that system. But there was, a, over the years, there's been a lot of issues um, with the ownership of the house, medical problems, bank involvements, and all of this, and it just kept going on and on and on. And so now, Mr. Hansen, who is my client now, um, has purchased the property, and he is, um, 
has issues, so he's going to sell it. And so finally, finally, after all these years, we're going to be upgrading the septic system. It's the only thing that's taking place here. This is, as you, can, as you know, it's against the Kuna Mesut River, the Cranberry Bogs. The entire lot is in the 100-foot riparian area. There's an inland bank. There's um, all of the things that we can't avoid or escape. The system is put to the front of the lot as far as the lot constraints will allow and still give a little setback from the property line and the street front. That is because it has to be mounted due to groundwater considerations. This is a Presby system, so there are some um, benefits to um, having a system of this design. And um, the closest, farthest we can get the feet leaching field is 80 feet from the top of the inland bank adjacent to the Mesa River. That's the best we can do. There is uh, no other activity going on with the house. They're not adding to the house. They're not increasing bedrooms. And in the course of installing this system, there are some little, again, I'm sure you saw what trees and some saplings. But we figured we could maybe plant three trees in the way back. That's about all we would maybe have room for, and that's marginal because it's sort of overgrown, and we would plant whatever trees you choose. I was thinking perhaps two balloons in the back, three two balloons, but I'll go with whatever you prefer. So you can go with some white oaks or, you know, try some cedars, but I thought the two balloons might survive better out there due to the ground proximity to groundwater. And that's pretty much it. Again, this project has been long in coming, and although it would have flown as an RDA before, I had to file a notice this time because of the three trees. But there you go, you have it. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks, Barbara. Um, Jen? No, it's a lot. Courtney? No questions. Kristen? No. Maury? Mm -hmm. I was just surprised it was a notice of intent. Because well, it was an upgrade to a septic. I know, and it's, it's the trees that did it because they yeah. won't have monitoring things. It's a, a big improvement. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's all, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike? Um, I'm going to ask you, this is probably an obvious answer, but why not move the system north, the area of the existing sewer, on the festival, and save those trees? Um, there was a reason. Let me think about that for a second. I think it had something to do with the fact that there's access across that lot at that side for the pipeline easement. Pipeline easement and the trucks to get over there to the bogs. And I think it ended up being closer to perhaps the inland bank on the other side. We did look at putting it under that corner. Okay, if you look at it, that's fine. Yeah. They, they we really did. Yeah. You got this open area. And I think it's the pipeline easement. That's fine. Yeah. There's good reason. I'm all for it. Right. That's I'm thinking a lot about the vegetation along the food vessel. Yes. My only request is that Jen, whoever mm -hmm. goes out, to pick out where the trees are and that the trees are closest. As close to the river as possible. I just threw the them. I, I threw them there. The three trees there. They yeah. will be. No, as, that's all I'm gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going in the front yard. Lovely to be there mm -hmm. with, to the to the jungle. Absolutely nice. Lots of you should there. buy it. It's a cute little mm -hmm. dinky house. I mean, mm -hmm. it, how much can it go for? And you can sit out there all the time. Well, we'll think about. It. Okay, there you go. No questions. Maybe. Is there a little expert on tight locks? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I am. I am a tight lock expert tonight. <laughs> there you go. No uh, questions. The motion that closely here and take it under five. Second. Second. We have a motion by Betsy and a second by Mike. Both of them are under five. Is there any other comments, questions, from the board? Comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Thank you very much. Now we're saying goodbye. No, I, I've got an even, Jamie, I have an even title lot than these coming up. <laughs> All right. We'll look forward to that. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, next up is Thank you. Sean and Lillian Wolf, 71 Minor Street, Found Mass, with permission to construct mm -hmm. a detached garage, extend the existing driveway, install drywall, native tree and shrub mitigation planting, and associated clearing, estimated grading, and landscaping. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the only issue going forward this evening is that the D BBW data sheets were not included in the uh, notice of intent application. I believe Mr. Bunker has them with him. Uh, correct, Tom? Yes. So the board will have to make a decision. Um, Oh, I'm not making these tough decisions for you. You know how I feel. With him, but this is the last yeah. time, Tom. Yes, and I do. Yes, the and fact after that there's you, a in the hearing and the written email memo, it didn't sink quite sink in. Clearly enough, it has mm -hmm. now. I know. It will sink in the next time you come and we send you home. And we don't give you warning and we make you That's sit here until 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> Then it'll it's sink in. It's, it's here now. Okay, Tom, that. go forward. Your last yeah. chance. Everybody's good with that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. For the record, I'm Tom Bunker with the SS Design. Prepare this plan uh, for. Is here today, uh, assuming it's just 17,400 and some square foot lot on Minot Street. Uh, is a small area of wetland on the lot and uh, a little bit more uh, on the adjacent lot. There's a uh, isolated, it's not a bordering vegetated wetland. Um, this wetland came up earlier uh, for a, uh, another client on um, Davis Road, um, which there was a question arose whether there was a vernal pool and uh, uh, what was the name, a, 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 an herpetologist for the report saying it's not a vernal pool. Uh, and so on this case, I call it a uh, Isolated wetland, not a vernal pool, has a 50 foot wide A zone uh, to the wetland. Uh, currently, it's uh, right down there. It's well, it just rained a little bit, so there's a little bit of standing water in it. It's muddy, matted, dry leaves. Uh, pretty much no other vegetation in there, except for some ferns and things coming up. Uh, vegetation. In this area, uh, so it's a lot of wood chips along there. Uh, not a lot of vegetation on the bank or in the in the buffer uh, due to uh, some activity. But I'll show you from 1975. canopies, uh, but it's pretty much, yeah, we, we have show the trunks of the trees on, on our plan, not the canopies, um, but this shows that there were trees on the abutting lot, across the back of the lot, and one or two trees in the front yard. I'd say uh, vegetation-wise, or rather uh, tree canopy-wise, this lot has not changed much. I can't speak for what the ground surface is like. Uh, but <coughs> It was pretty much like it was 40 years ago. Um, so we have the 50 foot A zone, 100 foot B zone shown on the plan. Um, there are no structures in the A zone. Uh, the house is entirely within the B zone. And what the wolves want to do is construct a garage in the B zone. It's uh, 10 and a half feet from the property line, so it's as, as far as it could be. In, in here uh, from the wetland. It's 56 feet. Uh, normally you'd 
want a 10 foot limit of work, which of course we can, there's no, no vegetation or anything within, you know, four feet into the, uh, into the A zone uh, to disturb, we do have a 10 foot limit of work shown on this plan. Uh, the, the garage, the uh, roof pitches only one direction that is away from the wetlands, so we're picking up, uh, they run off on one side, running into dry wells. The, uh, proposed driveway, uh, there's, so there's some broken up, there's some paved drive, some broken pavement and gravel area, uh, we'll be extending that down here with, uh, a, a pervious, uh, stone driveway, we showed the gravel pave, which is a plastic honeycomb structure with pea stone into it, and this does a very good job of, uh, stopping and infiltrating uh, any stormwater runoff and actually will intercept water that runs down the hill which uh, some of which could easily make it down toward the wetland. This will do a good job of stopping that water at the, at the base of the hill and, and uh, holding it and infiltrating it into this area. Uh, we've counted the uh, double the size of the garage for mitigation calculations. We have 1,344 square feet of mitigation planting. You can see that if you've been there recently, uh, a lot of pots are laid out there, already ready for planting, and two trees are already put in. Um, that's the proposal. I'll take any questions. Tom, how long have your clients owned the property? Uh, almost four years. Almost four years. I'm oh, sorry. So between 2011 and 2014, when that entire area by the wetland was cleared out, was there a permit to do that? Uh, there was. Um, there wasn't necessarily any clearing done. Um, so the wood chips there the, I, right I now. I laid wood chips down, but it was just. Uh, and the you have the aerial photos to prove that? Uh, I don't have aerial photos, but I have because photos of, I do. Uh, of I have aerial photos to... of that area that show that area was altered. That yeah. area is a wetland and it yeah. was altered without a permit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you think my board should react? to you proposing to build a garage and then using the mitigation you're required to put on the lot for your garage and using the area that you disturbed without a permit um, for that mitigation area. How um, do you really I don't honestly think you should, they should look at this? However they feel they should look at it. I mean, See. if it's required more planting, we can do more planting. If something else needs to be done, I don't know the process, so, I mean, whatever, however, if it's well, something else needs to be done in order to deal with that issue. That's going to have to be dealt with. Yeah. Just um, because that area there. was altered between 2011 and 2014 in that. Uh, we have pictures of, of when we first purchased the, the, the lot of what what the ground looked like, yes. Okay, yeah. you should really submit those so that they have a clear understanding sure. of what happened because we're going off of when we went out there, <coughs> was it last year, Tom? Davis Road? Uh, no, 2014 yeah, for when yeah. Dr. Rickman or Richmond did the vernal pull um, and it was altered. Um, and if you look at the aerial photos from when we have from 2011 and then to 2014, it was clearly disturbed in a... Yeah. a, a I'm not going to deny it. Was. Yeah. It sure was. So what I think needs to happen is that area needs to be restored mm -hmm. and then you need to determine whether or not you can fit the mitigation. And I mean, that's only um, a natural... That's the kind of the process the board takes. Yeah. I do have one question. It's not for you, Mr. Wolf. It's for Tom. Why did you give us this? Well, in 1975, when your regulation started, that was... You, you, you want us to take this as mm -hmm. evidence that the lot wasn't vegetated? 
time. You could get an aerial. You could get an aerial photo from '75, and you expect the board to accept the the topo from 1975 with squiggly marks on it. Which was taken. If you see that, that has okay. the outline of the tree canopies on it. And if it's more clear, I highlighted, I colored the green. With oh, I know you colored the green. Thank you. With, so you can see. Don't submit one the of these as, as official tree canopy this again. This is, as you say, a public document. Oh, I understand, in Tom. Possession mm -hmm. that I'm using to show that that's how it's like. Okay. The, the board can decide whether they would like to take the green squigglies into effect. Tom, you've provided aerial photos from the 60s before to prove a point. I think that would that you could have done a little bit better than I'm that. I'm just saying that this is clearer. The aerial photos are showing the same thing. This is clearer than the photos. I'm not going to take this as completely drown, ground truth either. So. Okay. So anyway, I just think that you need to kind of go back, look at the area that was disturbed without um, uh, without a valid permit, and then look at possibly putting more mitigation plantings in to kind of compensate for that disturbed area. Because I think where you have them right now kind of fills that disturbed area. Correct, Tom? More or less? Well, I'm not sure how much it was disturbed. It's, it doesn't fill the whole chipped area. Do you want me to kind of go on the buffer to the wetland? Because if we're going to do that, we can. I can just put out the 50-foot buffer to that wetland, and we can fill all that up too. So, oh, I mean, it's really going to be up to the board. But those are just my comments, Mr. Chairman. The area was disturbed without a permit. The area sh that was disturbed without a permit should not be used for mitigation for the garage. Um, and that's something the board will have to discuss. Thanks, and all I can tell you is that time period between 2011 and 2014. So if Mr. Wolf would like to continue the hearing to provide the evidence to show the backyard, I mean, that would be helpful it, with, for the board in making a determination of how they want to go forward. I would actually take a photograph of when you purchased it. I have a file for this, Tom. Thank you. Photos. I think that would be much more helpful than the green squigglies. I didn't draw the green squigglies. No, but you colored them in, and that I was uh, yes. Well. Yeah, I know you did. Thank you. I think it would be yeah. helpful. I think if, if um, Mr. Wolf would like to, to provide some additional evidence to the board that might, you know, clarify it. So when this area was disturbed, if, you know, it was done before. And unfortunately, Mr. Wolf, um, if it was done prior to you purchasing the property, that sometimes doesn't really, um, I don't want to say matter, but, um, you know, the board has to think of the environmental impacts. But I think it would be yeah, helpful in your case to, yeah. to provide that to us, and then that way it's easier for them to make a determination. And uh, I have a question. Um, so in regards to uh, mitigation work that would need to be done for the cleared area before? Before the, the, before the, the driveway. For, for the, the garage. garage. Correct. Um, Correct. Do you have an idea of what that would be what the requirements that we would have to meet for that area? That's for Tom to figure out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'd be happy to meet out there, Tom, yeah. with you and Mr. Wolf, and we can discuss it in the field where it's a little clearer. That's fine. I mean, from what I, yeah. Sorry, my, my only question would be if depending on the land that was cleared to uh, you know, what we, whatever we had to do to mitigate that, if doing that construction would just affect those plants, if it's something that should be done after the construction. I don't, like I'm saying, I don't know if, if that if the mitigation required 
would extend into the proposed work zone. No, it won't. It, won't. Be, that's, it, that's it can't question. because you can't build the garage and, and disturb an area or planting. And maybe I'm not following you. Yeah, it, 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 it won't happen. It won't. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that. that's my that was my only question. If we were if we had to plant that whole back area into where the proposed structure is going to be, we'll leave you room to build your garage. You might have to shift where that garage is, but that's that's yeah. Maybe. Yeah, you may have to. We may have to just shift it, but yeah. well, we can't really go any further. Away from yeah. yeah. Well. My purpose is getting the area restored before we're building a structure. Um, so, if we're getting it to continuance and we're getting these photos, can we get a new plan also? Oh, we plan. Yeah, okay. That's it. Okay, at the ring, what's the date, Jen? I mean, yeah, I have to write a note. So that when Tom comes back, that's what I'm trying to do here. It's yeah. all done. That's it. So I actually kind of enjoyed that. I thought that was probably a relaxing thing for you. I'm glad to see that you were into that. But what coloring? That's it's all the gray. Yeah, it's all the gray. And all coloring was. Tom, this is never going to get old. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kind of bland all the houses are white. Though. I wanted to know what this was. Grass. This lawn. What lawn? How do you know it was lawn? Yes. How do you know? You're guessing. Don't tell me you know for a fact it was lawn. You're Wait, looking right. at trees. Can't. Are you talking about this? I'm saying. I'm oh, that one. one. This little hatch. Oh, the little and hatch mark. And right. that indicates. Am I? Is that kind it's of? It's usually a, in our legend. That's the edge of lawn line. It's not in the legend. It's not. So. Garage. It's just a little housekeeping. That has to be I mean, I don't mind. It, it, yeah. it doesn't really matter to, to if I say it or not, but eventually that would all be plants anyways. I don't want to look at witches. But we didn't want to plant anything until the site work was done so that it wouldn't damage whatever. I, I found out after a few years that wood chips turned into mud. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We're looking at the, the area of the proposed um, driveway, Kirby. Uh, the fact that it's Kirby is so much water in it, okay. But there's no mitigation if it was vegetated before we stopped. When I was out there, the area wasn't vegetated, so you don't need it. You don't need mitigation. But if somehow in the process it was going from in the zone, it's only uh, impervious surfaces need to be mitigated for. Okay. You see where I'm going? Unless it was altered. I, I think I understand what you're saying. If, if there was like grass there before and we took the grass out, but wood chips, is that what you're asking? If you took shrubs out and put wood yeah, chips in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A forested area. Okay, yeah. I think. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think you can see it in some of the photographs um, that it was grass. But again, I mean, it's huge. Stand, so you see that area, I'm not too concerned about. The area, I'm not too concerned. Uh, oh, you want a date? I'll go for no trees. No question. No question. We'll tell with the photos. I it's think it's going to, the photo is going to be so way better than this. Um, I'm just keeping this. I'm feeling like that footage. Making me <laughs> Yeah, I'm working on it. Huh? Oh, you entertained me. I thought it was okay. It's all. My colors I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, uh, Tom, how long is it going to take you? Because we're not meeting next week. We just didn't get anything in. So would the eleventh work? That's the quickest I can get you back. Well, or do you uh, want me? Or do you I want the eighteenth or the twenty-fifth? It's a week. It's two weeks. Yeah, the eleventh is two weeks. Is that enough time for you? And maybe coordinate a site visit so we can go out and talk mm -hmm. in the field. Yeah. I mean, I don't really. Yeah, we don't have a meeting next case, week, yeah. so you, I'm pretty you tell, open. You tell me when Two weeks will be okay, well, gentlemen. So maybe, maybe the 18th would be better for you, Tom. Yeah, 18th. I think that's better. 18th. 18th. That's okay. A, if that's an influencing factor. At the request of the applicant, we'll continue this to May 18th. Is that second. a second? Gives me a motion by uh, Maury, second by Mike. Any other comments, questions from the board? Any comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, so we're we'll forward on the decision to May 18th. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstention. You have a very cute dog. She's looking very sad looking out the window. Uh, she's just sad because she lost people. Yeah, well, yeah, she, she looks like she wanted to play. Yeah. Okay, next oh. up is continued. That's the Eshuman Valley Property Owners Association. That's continued. So then we have a request to extend the existing order of conditions. Nice Neck Association. Association Lot 46 West Road, North Carolina, <coughs> for a request for a any extension. Yes, M Mr. Chairman, this is like a beach maintenance kind of uh, work. They were subject to the Permit Extension Act, so this permit has actually been valid for seven years. Um, I would recommend a one year extension on this only because the original consulting company that was doing the work was Rogue Waves. Um, uh, Steve Aubrey's company, um, yes, and so Mike Borselli will be taking over this work. Um, so I would just suggest a one-year extension, and that's it until they can refile next year. For so sure, thank you. So when does this expire, Jim? It expires in May, May twenty-first. Okay. So I would say May 21st of 2017, and then they will have to file a new notice of intent with updated plans, and we'll put that in the letter. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Comments, questions from the public? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Yeah. That's the name of someone. Okay, next up is Black Beach Harbor Head Association of Black Beach. Hills Road, Little Neck Park Road, Newark Lane, Drift Road, West Nile Mass for a three year extension. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the only issue the staff is having with this is that there was a requirement to put a yearly uh, maintenance and operating plan, uh, yearly maintenance. Um, and monitoring plan into the file. We did receive one. It was issued in May of 2013. They didn't get the swales built until after the, um, the September 30th deadline of 2013. So there was a September 2014 report, report submitted, but we did not receive one for 2015, which I find troubling. So. If the board were uh, to incline, uh, were inclined to grant an extension of this, I would say one year so they can submit their reports and let's see if they actually can submit reports and then go for a three year extension. This is the road maintenance out on yeah, Black what's Beach. The date? Maybe we can continue this and say get the date um, for the order? Yeah. Jack, do you have a 2015 report for me? <laughs> but you're the consultant. 
I have no problem going back and telling the current president that they have to comply with that regulation. Yeah, when does it expire? The date? I'm working on Fire. it. I'm working it on it. Uh, May 22nd. Uh, well, oh, this year? Give them all your May 22nd, or you could continue it until May sometime in May, and if we don't get a report in for the 2015... Um, Oh, wait, I have to. I have no problem with that. I have to go in and say, hey, this is what the Conservation Commission is doing. And long as it's authorized, well, authorized me to do it, I don't have a problem with that one bit. Tell them it's one year or three years. If they want three years, we would make it easier for all of us. I think they then they do it. better I come up with the report. And you can always continue it or again. Um, no, no, first of all, Jack should be up at the podium, guys. Jack, up at the podium. Okay, now, this is, these are the options. They can not approve the extension because the association did not comply with their order of conditions. And I don't want to remind you how difficult it was to get to the point of an order of conditions. Right. I, I don't okay. want to do that either. Yes. Second, the board can continue this until, let's say, May 18th, so that the association has the ability sub to submit the required monitoring report to them. And if it is not submitted by May 18th, then they don't get the extension. Or you can grant a one-year extension, or because it's a road maintenance project, a three-year extension. It is really up to you. But those are your four choices that your staff is giving you at this moment. I would like to give, get the report in because I think that would make them more apt to get it in. Mm -hmm. We give them a deadline. So continue, um, it, until May continue it until May 18th. And we suggest you send the word that if we don't get it on May 18th, they might not have an order of convenience anymore. Oh, I, I understand that. That would be an option for us to choose. The only thing I was thinking about, I have no problem with the report, the only thing I was thinking about is if part of it is to see what type of vegetation has survived the winter, I don't know if May 18th would be sufficient. I'd like to speak. I'd like to Jack, speak. Jack, you, you should have been monitoring it over last winter. It expires. It expires. We can't. There's nothing we can do if about If there's nothing on May 18th. And everything's popping Okay, right you know now. what? May 18th works. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it works. Go down It'll and do to. your best assessment. I mean, I'm the swales sure. looked good in 2014. I mean, they did. They, they looked really, really good. good. They, everything looks great okay. down there. Yeah. So. The only thing I was thinking of any of the plant material that was in it. Would we see it come back? Yes. The yeah, yeah. I, I just don't know. I wanted to speak to the I wanted to speak to the landscaper. That's all. But we'll make it work for the 18th. At the request of the applicant, I uh, could make a motion to continue to the 18th. Second. Claude, did you have something? Yeah. I, you're the one that's got to write the report, or is there somebody else floating around out there? Um, well, no, this will require the input by the person who does the landscaping. Do you feel like you can beat that person over the head sufficiently to get a report from them? Oh yeah, I think I think that's doable. Go for it. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion by Patsy and a second by Mary. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Comments, questions in the public? Thank you. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed no. That's your unanimous vote. Can I? Have fun. Okay. Uh, both orders of conditions. I'm going to take these slightly out of order. I'm going to start with 460 degrees at first. So that's the only one Mary's on, and she can sneak away. Thank you, Mr. Sam Chairman. Sam is sneaking away also. I can see that, Sam. <laughs> Sam. I'm having way too much fun with that. Yeah, I think we should all I'm going to get that for you. I, oh, I'm having way too much fun with that. Oh, my God, this will bring him in next week. That merits wall space in the cubicle. We should verify that was spring and not autumn. I have a coloring book in my closet. Let me bring it in.
Oh, I think we, yes, I think we can, yes. All right, 460 Grand Ave was the patio spa planting area. Out. Oh, wait a minute, I have to write something down. Hang on, yeah. 460 Grand Ave, it's off of Deacon's. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Grand Ave is the, is the, um, is the, the driveway, but the patio is off of, De it's in between the house and then Deacon's Ave and then Falmouth and Harbor actually parked there the other day. So it was the, the, the improvements to the outdoor living space with all the different plantings they had in there. And then I think the only, um, you know, tried to work with them with the dogwood, but I think the neighbor wanted a pussy willow instead of a dogwood. Right. So I'll give them the option of planting either. But other than that, I mean, I did work with them. They did reduce the size of the, or reduce the concept from when I first saw it and um, were able to put the required mitigation plantings in. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Okay. It's important to work with staff, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think the I, only thing we had were the, the arborvitaes by the hot tub that they were going to try and save, and if not, they were going to replant. Give applicant um, choice of dogwood or... Salix. Yeah. Salix. Okay, anything else? Oh, and yes, wait, also. replant arborvitaes if replant with cedar if arborvitaes is removed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other thing, remember the nettle? Oh, oh yeah, wait a minute. Uh, lamium. If. The lamium, the ground cover. Oh, yeah. You're going to put, yeah. You yeah. could use something else besides that. Yeah, I want um, no nettle. Bearberry. We'll, we'll just have them put bare berry. Okay. The order is discussed. Okay, so that's Mary. Motion, that's the second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those in favor, no. Oh. Yeah. What do you need? Everybody. Oh, you form, uh, form, yeah. Yes. And I'm not on the rest of them, so thank you. Is everyone no, on the Yes, everybody was on the form. But from now on, Mary won't be on the form. Okay, 93 T ticket cap. This is the amended for the walkway on the dock. Give me one moment, Mr. Chairman. The walkway to the dock. Yeah. Yeah. They added a they added a walkway to the Where's my coloring thing? Oh, I gotta keep that. Actually. Are you drawing a blank? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Remember Mike's Mike originally sent me pictures of the tree right in the middle, in the middle of the walkway? It. it was so funny, I got those, I go, apparently Mike's at ninety three to ticket path. I love getting pictures from the, in the future. When you're in the field, Mike. So we saved the oak. Yeah, we saved yep. the oak. That's yep. it. That's it. Did we continue? Did we save what continued? Um, I don't think I had anything written down. I had nothing written on my plan. Okay, so just so, um, save as according to plan. Second. Okay, so we have Mari on the motion. Betsy on the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. 26 Eel River Road. Mr. Chairman, you look like going a little too quick for me here. Okay. Oh, Here we go. I got it. It's all right. I'm working on it. Wait a minute. I got, I got forum sheets, too, here. No, the they're not all the same. The wall, the wall and, and the yeah, Wait a minute. And we changed the patio into a seashell. Oh, yeah. But did we have a revised plan on this? Yes, we do. The revised plan was 322.16. Wait a minute. For 26 Hill River? Which one are we on? 26 Hill River. All right, I don't have that. 322. Do you want this one? Yes. 
have that I don't know why I don't have that with me. I'm sorry. Hang on. Same one. Yeah, that's the revised one. Yeah. All right, let me see the revised. Oh, yeah, so they were doing the, the seashells and, the and they were doing the flow through decking. Yeah. And yeah, I don't have any. The only thing was that we uh, put the condition in no fertilizing anywhere on the slot since all of the 100 feet of salt marsh. Oh, on that note, just to uh, let the board know that MES will be. I think they're sending letters out oh, good. regarding the fertilizer bylaw oh, to all affected property owners. Adopt the order of conditions as can discuss. Yes. That's what you just asked me. Yes, Sorry, I can't help it. I'm just trying to go slow. I love this thing. <laughs> So add straw wattle to limit of work at base near rip, um, post and rail fence. Mm -hmm. Cut and fill cags for about 50 cubic yeah. rod. Revised plan showing the two missing oaks. Relocate oh, yeah. our plant and add filter cloth to wall. And That's what I got. And take the 10 foot off, a 10 foot top of wall off of the plant. Okay, well, okay, hang on. Add filter cloth. Mm -hmm. Now, did he get all those into us? Not yet. Interesting. So, um, I'm sorry. Special condition. Take top of, uh, he had top of wall 10 foot on plan and he had to remove that. So I guess my question is, if he doesn't get us the plan, we have to, we have to vote on this. Wait, add throttle to limit of work and add base of uh, work. Okay. And what? Rail fence, revised plan, okay, give me one second, uh, plan showing two missing oaks and, okay, Maury, go. And then um, no more than 50 cubic yards of fill. Wait, no. What was the 10? Oh, and to remove the 10 foot top of wall elevation off a of plan. Top. Right, where is that shown? Um, I think it was, oh, it was in the detail on the second page. Or, or where, no, I'm sorry. Right here, typical retaining wall. And it says top of wall, 10 foot. Somewhere, I'll find it. Just a minute. I have a minimum maximum height of five feet. Somewhere there was a ten foot. I don't know where it is, but I'm sorry. Yeah, I saw board. that. I know. And then he said, "Oh, I just put it in there." Wait a I minute. I just don't want the wall to be ten feet tall. No, I understand that. See details. Help me out here. I'm helping. I'm trying. Remove existing. No, lines. I know where it was. I think there it is, right here. Coping overhang to be approximately three inches for walls, ten foot or more. In height. Got it. 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 It is. But if you have that on there, the, they will. They can build to ten feet if it's in the plan. Right. So you want that? The plan. that we want, want it scratch. Yeah. We did tell them that. Struck. 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 And then, like, all right, so and how do we make sure the plan gets in before this gets started, or do we, do we not work? I just plan prior to work, start work. Start work. Okay. And I move to approve the um, conditions as discussed. Second. Unfortunately for this, this is like landscape work, so they don't have to go. I wasn't on that floor. No. Right. Um, 
Racing Beach is the little deck in the back. So the only one is add drywall to pipes. And cedars on own lot. Cedars what? To be on their property. The add drywall to pipes and and those were the only two things that were on the side. I, I think I think we should just put it in there that if the road gets it, wide okay. they have to be saved, saved. and moved. Relocated, because I, I think if you push them in too far... They're going to be on the SAS. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's it's a private road, so... Well, that's a finding. Dusty Mill is a private, private road. Private road. How's that? And then they can leave them where they are. If... <coughs> if... Removed... For... Future... Road work... Expansion... They have to be replaced. Yeah. Is there an association with this... Yes. Yes, sir. So why can't they get permission from the association? If removed for future road work, replace on lot. Because they probably, it's so, it's not, it, they probably don't even know it's their road. Yeah. Replace on lot. There is, an, I, there is some sort of association because they did all the drainage work. Now, how much yes, control right. that association has over the roads and everything, I don't know. But they did all the drainage work, so. We remember that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I'm curious whether 59 Minot Road gave you new oh, plans. Yeah. Is it, it go look in there? I I don't I haven't seen oh, it. Second. So we had a motion by Mike, a second by Jamie to approve as discussed 63 degrees in detail. All those in favor say aye. 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 I don't believe so, yeah, so Betsy. 59 Minot Road. If we don't have a new plan on this one, I think we should continue this one. We can't continue yeah, we it. Oh, closed yeah. it. We well, down, right? if we don't have a new plan, then I am, I am not going to vote on this. It'll be a procedural denial of however we do it. Because this has a lot of things. And this was, we'll give you the first time. And he said, I, I will give it back. That's the fence that he's on. This is the one that needed permission from the town. Yes. And yeah. it needed aerials. And it needs, it's doing work on town property. And it's, it's a fence and a bee zone. And, No, you so closed it. We closed it. I and will, he was going to get it all back. I will make a motion to approve, and then we can vote not to approve. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I think if this hasn't, we've got these many loose ends with this thing, I don't see how we can well, approve okay, so, the project. So, Court, what you're saying is uh, to, to, you're making a motion to approve as discussed? Yeah, because you've okay. got to have a positive motion. Right. Okay? Then then the vote can be... Okay. Well, there, we, we can... Well, I have, I have comment. Can I somebody have, find the file before you I comment? Let me make my comment. We actually did say, we, we discussed this, and you said, you didn't want to approve it. Yeah. So I did say that. You said no. It's in the minutes. It's in the minutes. So it's contingent on... Town approval. Selection is approved. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was on page three of our minutes of April 13th, I think. Somewhere. Somewhere we have it. It was in our minutes and I read it. I don't know what I did with it. But it said that. Betsy, it's in there. Menard Road. Cavalier. What did you guys is do? Is Menard Road? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. It's on page seven of our April 13th minutes. And. Um, moved to close the hearing, and then it was, I said I'm not comfortable with closing the hearing before permission is received from the Board of Selectmen. Then it said, we will let you get to do this one time, but don't do it again. So there were loose ends, no aerials, no permission from the Selectmen. So no communications at all, Jen? No, they didn't call and say, you know, no. we have a, 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 no. a, 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 a meeting a a and I'm certain with a Selectmen. No. And okay. what kind of time frame is left on that? That was just one time. You get the. No, but I meant before we have to do something with this. Do I don't we see can deny that. it. Just deny the project. It should be in there. You guys should have signed it. Maybe it's on. Oh. No, somebody shoved them all in the cart already. 
Did everybody sign them? Yes, they were all signed. There were at least five on every one. It's in there, Betsy. If not, and then you want proof of Spence's legal status. If not, it cannot be replaced. That's what I have in my notes. All my, well, my notes just were in, in the discussion because I read them off from the, <laughs> the minutes. And uh, he needed a DEP. He had, did you find out from DEP if Chapter 91 license was needed for that corner of the wall? He needed proof of the fence that there were pictures of it and aerials, selectman approval to remove wall, and co correct lot coverage calcs, because yeah, they were totally wrong. Yeah, that's why I wanted to see if there was a new plan. That's what I wanted to see, what the lot coverage So there's no new plan. Why don't I do revised plan must be approved by commission? Huh? Here you go. Well, that still leaves a selectman thing. We're giving permission to work on town property. Um, no, he's okay. going to have to get permission from the selectman, then come back. Revised. Permission, then come back. Come back. No so you know what? Next no, time, don't close the damn hearing. Well, I tried. Yeah. They, yeah. They have to do a revised plan, but before they show it to us, they also have to show us a letter from the select. Yeah. Revised plan <coughs> must be approved by commission. All those so conditions that are we're just discussing in the world line should be met before. Yeah, that's what she just said, Courtney. You know that. This is our mistake. I'm not comfortable. Well, you know what? You guys let them close it, so this is what you have to do. So let's go forward, and then next time, just don't do it again. Yeah, it's our mistake. I wouldn't say it's your mistake. Don't ever say it's your mistake. These close engineers it. Close are. It. Yes, yeah. close you shouldn't it. have closed it, but they are very well aware that if they're working on town property, they need to come to you first. So anyway, there's a quick mo motion on the, on the table. Do I have a second? Second. And, and that's to close the hearing. Second. That's to no, accept. No, that's to accept it. We already closed the hearing. That's oh, I'm to sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Prove the hearing. Scott, no. Prove no. is discussed. Look, was discussed. So what did we, before I vote on this, what did we discuss? That he I will look. Hey, I'm going to go through it right now. Okay. Everybody, zip. They provide a letter of approval from the Board of Selectment. They provide a revised plan that must be approved uh, by you, pro um, proving the, the status of the fence, giving them permission from the Board of Selectment, Chapter 91, and lot coverage. Lot and revised lot coverage calcs. And that's all and before work can begin? Is that's that all point? before work can begin. And if he can't, if he doesn't get permission from the selectman, he then he can't do work. anything. If he can't prove the fence was there, he doesn't get to build it. And if he can't get Chapter 91, which is Well, he take. needs you guys to start going before Chapter 91. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're voting on. Then vote no court. It's okay. It's all good. Any other comments or questions? Okay, we'll call the vote. All those in favor of approval. Signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. no? No. No. How many ayes? Three ayes, three no's. Are you an aye? So three ayes, three no's. The motion doesn't carry, I so. That was four ayes. No, okay. she's not on it. Everybody who said aye, Second. put your hand up, please. Oops, sorry. <laughs> That's what threw me off. Three eyes. Okay. Yeah. All those opposed, put your hand up. Three eyes. So, so it doesn't pass. It doesn't pass, so we'll write a procedural denial because procedurally you want these items. Okay? And he did, he did not give us we, the information. So okay. If I had the information tonight, I'm sure these people would have voted for it. That's right. I mean, okay. just an appointment with the select one, like Mario was saying. You know, at least the, you know, some it's of the okay. date certain with yeah. the selectman that he was even trying to make an attempt would have been helpful. Yeah. I mean, I, the fact it's because of the way the motion was stated and the specifics in this discussion, I think it's very clear why the, 
by why the procedure was not. They now have a chance to act on it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. All right, one fifty three pins next point. Um, one second, Mr. Chairman. Is, is this the correct one? On um, which one? No, Kristen, you can go. <laughs> Kristen, you're just like torturing yourself I now. I <laughs> that is, that's, that's the right one. The one I showed you? Yes. Okay. They got their loma. Now it meets regulations? Now it meets, well, well the, yes, they got their loamer, so it now meets the regulations. I can really remember this. must be so submitted prior to sign off on building permit. You guys didn't like that. Other than that, you were very supportive of the project. There are a few little nuances to the project. One, it is shifting closer to one wetland just to get it away, because they have to take it and shift, so it's moving away from the back wetland, but it's kind of shifting slightly closer to the little isolated wetland. Um, but they're raising it above the flood zone, the new flood zone, the loamer was accepted, and then they had done a really nice planting plan in the back uh, by, I think it was... Is it Blue Flax or Wilkinson? That's going to be a nice plan. Wilson, when it's completed. Who was it? I can't work Hang on, I'm getting it. I just saw it. Wilkinson. Yeah. So, it will be a nice project. So, just make the appropriate findings for this one and improve it. Yes? Oh, that's discuss. never going to get old. I mean, make a motion to approve it. Right. The motion by Dutsy is second by Mike. Any other comments or questions from the board? Just one question, Jen. Yes, oh, ma'am. put in there, we did have a discussion about the fill. And I'm trying to think to see where it was, that there was no more than, where the heck did I just see it? We had it. This has been so long, like 1,100 cubic yards of fill was the limit that we had said, talked about. It's just in the uh, uh, 1,133 cubic yards needs to be brought in. Okay. That was the only thing. Somebody have an elastic? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to start charging the farm though. I know. Actually, I give them to you, so. You can't charge me. I'm the one that provides you them. Any, anything else on 153? No. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the vote then. We, we have a motion to second, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed, no. No, I know. They know that. And so moved. Were they sick before we back up? One more motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Elastic. Motion to adjourn by Courtney. Second by Tammy. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Courtney, give her the elastic. We're adjourned. Mm -hmm. What's this? Courtney, give her the elastic. What's that? The elastic.